Talk of the Week, take two. Well, another week uh, that may have left you utterly bemused, but less bemused, I suspect, than the so-called Remain Alliance. Yeah, of course, I'm talking about uh, the Labour Party. I'm talking about the Liberal Democrats. I'm talking about the SNP. I'm talking about Plaid. I'm talking about the One Green. Oh, and of course, Anna Soubry. Don't forget Anna Soubry. She's leading a party who were hovering at around about 0% in the polls and yet seems to dominate the BBC almost every day. Now, the idea was they would gang together bring forward a motion of confidence, get rid of Boris Johnson, and given that he now has a, a minus 43 deficit in the Commons, you wouldn't have thought that was too bad. Um, and they would take control, seize control of the government. They've been in meetings all week, in fact, at times in London this week. It's been eerily quiet, but they've got nowhere. Do you know why? They can't agree on who, who the leader should be. Now, old Grandpa Corbyn, uh, is of course the leader of the opposition, uh, but the old Marxist is not going to get the support of those 21 Conservatives who were kicked out. Uh, the Liberal Democrats do not want uh, Corbyn to be in number 10, even for a temporary period, because of course they're in direct competition with Labour for the votes, and no compromise candidate has been found. Margaret Beckett has been suggested, I've absolutely no idea why. Uh, and equally Ken Clark who's just touching 80, uh, thinks that he perhaps is the man for the job. So thus far, to my surprise, they haven't moved a motion of confidence. And they're running out of time because next Tuesday, Parliament is going to be prorogued. Yes, prorogued. Gosh, will the Supreme Court have to sit again? No, actually, this is normal before a Queen's speech. It's just that the previous attempt at doing this was hopelessly mishandled by the government. Uh, giving, I think, way too many arguments to the Remain side that, in fact, they were the good guys. They were in charge of uh, democracy and freedom and liberty and parliamentary sovereignty. So Parliament's prorogued on Tuesday. And then when it comes back, on Monday the 14th, there's going to be a Queen's speech, followed by a couple of days of debate. And then, of course, Boris heads off to the European summit, the all-important European summit in Brussels on the 17th of October. So they're running... In a sense, they're running out of time uh, to remove Boris as Prime Minister. Now, Boris himself, of course, his first speech to the Conservative conference as Prime Minister. And, oh, I had to laugh. I had to laugh. From the beginning, there he was at the back of the hall as the lights went down and the music began to play. And it was for every bit of it a carbon copy of everything we in the Brexit party do, particularly the big vision rally that we put on with five and a half thousand people back in June in Birmingham. The difference was they went for the big rah-rah, the big razzmatazz, and as Boris came through the crowd to this music playing and this big scene, uh, there was a slight difference between the Conservative Party and the Brexit Party. When I'm doing that, and walking through the crowd, they say, go on, Nige, go on, son. Or there are women rushing out of the audience trying to grab me. With Boris, they stood there politely saying, hello, Mr. Johnson, frightfully pleased to meet you. And it just did not work as a big rah-rah. Boris got on stage, and at one point, I couldn't believe it, at one point he even said, we are ready. I mean, they literally have copied everything we've talked about in terms of style, design, uh, and also in terms of policy. I mean, they're talking now about broadband. They're talking uh, about improved infrastructure links in the north of England. A couple of weeks ago, we said we thought inheritance tax should go because actually, in London and the South East, it now affects ordinary families, not the rich. Um, and we joked when we announced it. I wonder how long it'll be before the Tories copy that one, when it took two weeks. So I think we're doing quite well in writing uh, the government's manifesto. Uh, the Boris speech, well, look, he'd written it himself. It was delivered without autocue, but from notes on a desk. I, I mean, he's miles better than Theresa May. I mean, you may say that's not difficult. He's miles better than Theresa May. And there was one, I thought, quite funny moment in it when he talked about, you know, if Parliament uh, was the jungle, uh, they'd all be voted out but at least we'd have the, the joy of seeing Speaker John Burko eating a kangaroo's testicle. That was funny. It went down quite well. Other jokes uh, were not as funny as Boris normally can be. He wasn't as upbeat as he often is, but then I guess he is Prime Minister. 
wasn't much detail, lots of talk about being a one nation Tory, lots of talk about going green in all sorts of different ways. Um, but he did say, we're going to get Brexit done. That was the theme of their conference. And he did say, they did say that we are leaving come what may on the 31st of October. Now, strangely, you would have expected his speech to the Conservative conference to be the news story of the day. Indeed, perhaps in some ways, the news story of the week. But no, no. That afternoon, his big offer, his letter to Jean-Claude Juncker, his attached new compromise proposals were published. Now, what does this amount to? Well, on the one hand, uh, with Northern Ireland, the backstop is replaced by a slightly complex two-border solution, uh, with Northern Ireland uh, staying part of the customs union rules on a renewable four-year basis to be decided by the Stormont Assembly. It is potentially the annexation of a part of the United Kingdom. It puts a border down the Irish Sea. And I, I simply couldn't believe that Arlene Foster of the DUP was prepared to accept it. In fact, I could hear the founder of the DUP, Dr Ian Paisley, bellowing down from the heavens that this was a surrender. But it, it was accompanied by um, a new plan for Northern Ireland, which means the government will pump in vast amounts of taxpayers' money, which I guess acted as an incentive. But the exciting thing about what Boris said, the aspirational thing about what Boris said, is that the United Kingdom would leave the customs union, all of the United Kingdom, would leave the customs union at the end of the transition period, um, and that we would no longer be aligned, Northern Ireland accepted, no longer aligned with EU rules. Now, this is getting a bit nearer to what Brexiteers actually want, and I think is a positive thing, a positive statement. It means that the political declaration will have to change because Article 23 of it says very clearly that any new trade deal will be based on existing customs rules. Aspiration good, delivery, look, the EU are never going to accept this in a month of Sundays. Um, so I don't think it's coming back to Parliament. And Boris now faces a choice. Either, and he said it again today in the House of Commons, either he takes us out with no deal or a clean break Brexit, depending on your uh, choice of menu. Either he does that on the 31st of October and he thinks there is a loophole in the Ben Act that allows us to do it, or he accepts an extension. All I would say is this, Boris, if you now really want a genuine free trade agreement as opposed to the close and special partnership that Mrs May was aiming at, why on earth not just ditch any thoughts of the withdrawal agreement, any thoughts of that attached political declaration and get ready to fight a general election in some time to come saying, look, we'll give the EU a few months to agree a trade deal or we are leaving on WTO rules. Don't, Boris, kick the can down the road. Any thought that maybe we'll get out at the end of a transition period means that you are actually putting faith, good faith, with the European Union. It's like putting your head into a crocodile's mouth and hoping that he will behave. Make your mind up, Boris. Is it a clean break Brexit or do we kick the can down the road? Do we extend yet again? If we do extend, there'll be an extension rebellion. I'll make sure of it.